I'm sharing something really special with you today. This is the way I grew up. These guys are over here salting the hams. I hope you really enjoy this. If you don't want to see the way that animals are processed on the farm, then I suggest you don't watch this video. If you do, then this is something very interesting, teaching you the old Appalachian way of curing hams and processing hogs. This is the way I was raised. Please, if you have any comments, leave them down below. Please don't leave condescending, hateful comments, hateful remarks, because I'll just delete them. Thanks a lot. Hey folks, it's Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. Today is gonna to be day two of the pig slaughter video. If you haven't seen day number one, then right up here or right up here, I'll post a link to it. Click that link, watch that video first. That'll be part one of this, where we took the pig from the hoof and scalded it and prepared it for salting down and for getting ready to take over here and put in the salt box. So if you don't want to see animals, if you don't want to see the Appalachian way of life here, if you don't want to see blood, if you don't want to see meat other than sitting in your grocery store shelf, then don't watch this video. I encourage you to stay on the vlog, just watch other videos. But this is part of farming, this is part of life, this is part of my lifestyle. This is something that I think you can learn a whole lot from. So we have the pigs here, we're going to get them all quartered up, we're going to put them in the salt box, and we'll show you some other stuff along the way here today. This is part two of probably a three-part series. Well, come on along, we'll have a little bit of fun today, and you'll learn a little bit of something about the old way, about the way that Virginia hams are made. It's going to be cool. All right? Woo! Yes, I was So folks, what we're doing right now is we're unloading bags right here. And this is the porch of my dad's cabin right here. There's a salt box that we've built, and I'll take you over and show you that. This is the salt that we're gonna use for salting the hams. And this is the salt box right here, okay? So basically there's a layer of salt in the bottom of that box right there. And then we'll set our hams down in and we'll cover them up. And then we'll set another layer in, we'll cover them up. We'll set another layer in, we'll cover them up. We'll put our fat back meat, our hams, all that stuff in there to cure we'll show you how we do it let's look at the salt box construction right here basically it's made by with two by ten construction it's all built it's open to air a little bit so that it can breathe these are just butted together basically just something simple used made with scrap materials and we got a little layer of salt probably an inch thick down there in the bottom so if you guys missed a video yesterday I crashed the drone into the pine trees up here and my dad doesn't understand that that's just part of having a YouTube channel. Sometimes you crash your drone. So he's giving me total crap all day. It doesn't matter. It's pretty funny though. We're taking the pig down to dismember it. Basically take all of the parts apart. Take its head off, take the shoulders off, take the hams off, and prepare it to put in the salt box. Some of it will be making pork chops, some will be making bacon, spare ribs, all that stuff. And sausage. Yum yum. Good stuff. Nothing like fresh sausage from a fresh farm killed hog. Okay, we're taking the hog and we remove the feet and the head and we're going to lay them out here on this plywood basically it's a plywood home built table made out of pallets and a piece of plywood we'll lay them out and we'll quarter him up this is called a single tree. It's a hook that you hook through the Achilles tendon of the hog when we raise him up. It's called a single tree. Yeah. 
<laughs> See this part right here? This is the first part we eat. So we go ahead and cut that uh, area right there around the tail, and we eat that on day number one. Raw. <laughs> it, raw. We. <laughs> Find the very center as you can find it. See right there? I see the line on Okay. Give me a little bit of slack. A little bit more. Okay. Damn. Hold it tight. I just get right there on that line because I can't see the line. Okay, ready? Yep. That's good. You put stuff down with working lines, ain't you? Mm hmm. You're going to hit it like that. Then start on the other side. You hit it like that. Yeah, you can put that in there. You're going to feel bone. Just follow your line all the way down. Now you don't know which side of that backbone you own, but you know you're pretty damn close with that chalk line. See, see the bone's right there. Mm -hmm. I'm hitting that bone with the tip of the knife. See, I'm on this side of the bone. I can feel it. The okay. ball bone is going like that in there. Uh -huh. I'm on this side of it. The same depth as the knife is. Now we're on this side of the ridge bone. You go down through there and make it. Follow the bone right in there. Now follow your bone all the way down. Make sure the tip of the knife is touching the bone all the way down. Hold every damn one of y'all. Don't let me forget to put the chalk line on before I lay him down. <laughs> and every damn one. You forgot it. You forgot it. You forgot it. That's the reason you need that old long knife you can see now. That's why you need it. Hit the head center there. There's your knuckle right there. There you go. Okay, like I said, well, only one piece is going to be on the other. <clears throat> Flip them over. Okay, slide them the over. So you can simply cut them twice down the back? back just one. So at this point, we're going to split the hog in half, okay? So they're laying out the tenderloins, and right here is a tenderloin, okay? This is like the roast that you can get in the store, except for a hundred times better. Delicious. You guys have probably heard it takes a village. Well, if you look back here, it takes a village. It takes a lot of people to get this done. This is a heavy, heavy piece of meat. What he's doing, he's taking a knife and a hammer and we're pecking our way through rib bones and back bones. So now we've got the hog split. We're going to start quartering it up, okay? Jack come from over all the way around over here now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly where that pin is. Don't you, Jack? Mm -hmm. right there, got some weight to it. Mm -hmm. So we've got the pig split, we've cut out the tenderloins, we'll start splitting out the hams, and we'll start taking them over there. I'll show you the areas that we cut to separate the hams. We pull the ribs off and basically just cut underneath the rib. When you're working with a pig like this, it's really oily and greasy. The lard and the fat makes it really oily and greasy and it's hard to hold on to things, which makes it a little bit dangerous. You can cut yourself really easy. Right there, that's the bacon. Like so, like I say, a whole lot of people call it sow belly. Old folks call it sow belly. But we gotta trim this up right here, and we're gonna we're gonna take this excess meat here for sausage. Okay. You got that big pot? Is that where the sausage is going? We'll put the lard in there. Let's put the sausage in that flat one because I want to chill it overnight. Mm -hmm. Put it in the refrigerator and chill it. And we'll grind it up in the morning. So fat in there. Sausage in there. Sausagey yeah. meat in there. If you leave a little bit of fat on it, it ain't gonna hurt it. You gotta get yeah, all the meat off. It's okay to have fat in there, but it ain't okay to have meat in here because this boils off and then. Then we're gonna trim this off. You see, we'll put that into sausage. You got this, just take the skins off, you see? Gotcha. So take the skin off of that, and that's right there's your bone, there's your shoulder bone. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're gonna leave some fat on it. So we're coming around like that. Just like that right there. There you go. There's a piece of fat back. Now, that goes over with the stuff we're going to salt down. There you go, Joe. Now do that like you fillet a fish. Put him right here. Like, like you're filleting the fish and getting the skin off of him. Put him right there, and you go right down through there. Get this skin. See, okay. But the, it ain't the knife's getting dull, but it's okay. Now, put that with the lard. We're gonna make some cracklings. Find the last bone that's in the end of the ham, and cut straight down beside it. Try to make one straight, long, even cut. Never short, choppy cuts. Oh, it, it, with it. 
we're going to first uh, separate the bacon, middling, and fat back. All right. Therefore, we got to trim it up, get all the trimmings nice and neat, so that we can. Once it's neatly trimmed, the salt will take evenly. The pieces that are just flapping in there, they'll just get so strong you can't use them. They'll get so salty you can't even eat them. So, once we get her all cleaned up, we'll be ready to put it in the salt box. And we'll have three different pieces. One couple can kill one hog. And it'll last them. My last one lasted seven years. Okay, now we're going to clean it up. As when we opened the hog up, we had a little dirt on our clothes and everything. We were gutting it and stuff, so we got a little bit of trash right here on the outside edge. We're going to trim that up before we salt it down. What do we have here? We're looking at fat back. The fat back from here to here, mm -hmm. middling meat from here to here, and bacon from here to here. And the middling meat is used for mainly cooking with beans or whatever. Some people, I like middling just as good as I do fat back, but some people who want a lot of lean meat, uh, you know, they, they, uh, it's not as much lean as you head up toward the back as there is down near this belly. Gotcha. Oh, we are cross. Even it's got some lean on it, ain't it? It does. It's nice hogs. Okay, with my loose. No, top. Okay. Finger. Now, we don't want to skin that. We just want to have it like it is. Very good eating. Now, we're going to split her again. We'll get into the Midlands. Let's see. Now, it appears as though we're going to have a bacon and a Midland. So. We're going to cut it dead center. <clears throat> All right. Now this will be a piece of your bacon here. And this will be a piece of your middling here. Now if you want to use more for bacon, you can always take an end off of this part because the lean won't be as stick on the middling as it is on the bacon. <laughs> this is the raw ham, the last piece that we're going to put into the salt box. It's kind of jaggedy looking now because all we've done is block out the hog. We've cut it into six different sections. Uh, we'll find the end of the bone here. We'll take a good sharp knife, a long knife, not a short knife. And you'll make a long, clean sweep and shape it into what you want it to look like when you're done. And then there we go. One clean sweep. Then we'll do the same thing down to the belly of the hog. And we'll make another long, clean sweep in the same direction as the ham itself. And then we'll round it right off. So we have a raw uncured ham ready to be put into the salt box. If the ham weighs 50 pounds, the hog weighed 10 times that. So you can figure the hog weighed 500 pounds if the ham weighed 50 pounds. And we're going to remove the jowls and we're going to salt those down just exactly like we did the Midlands and it is a nicer cut of meat that most people disregard. They, they, don't, even, they don't even use it. So here we go. Now, okay, Joe, same deal. See, like that, because mm -hmm. it's got a thin place in there. You got to find that thin place. You just keep on going round. A little cut at the time. Keep your knife touching the bone of the hog. If the knife's not touching the bone, you're making a miscut. So just continue on in here, Joe. Get in and there, get all you can get. What's stuck on it, we'll make sausage out of the trimmings. But you see the picture. There it is. So the young men are working the sausage here. How old are you boys? 15. 15? And 13. And your names are? Hunter, Powell, 
and Tommy Powell. Right on. And y'all are cutting up the sausage, is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are you doing there? Are you removing all the fat that you can and leaving the lean meat? Yes. Yep. Separating it. Okay. How'd you learn how to do this? Just uh, when my dad's uh, people, when they would uh, raise hogs and kill them, yeah. we would go help him. So your dad taught you and the folks that was up there taught you? Yep. Yeah. So folks, how many of you have 13 and 15 year old young men that know how to handle a knife like this. Most of them are sitting there at the house playing their little video games and pushing buttons. These are men. Young men. So let me go ahead and address this. Tomorrow is when we'll be talking about making the sausage and making the bacon, okay? The salt cured meat won't be bacon, tenderloin, or sausage. We'll cure that in a different way. We'll cure the bacon in a different way. And we'll talk a little bit about that tomorrow in part three. All right? So folks, there's a few things we're not showing you. We're not gonna show you the spare ribs, splitting up the spare ribs. It's pretty simple. We've got the bacon right here. We take the jaws of the hog, which is this part right here, and we'll cure that also. But we're not showing you a few things. We'll also render the lard and the fat here, and we'll make what's called cracklings. We'll boil that down, and we'll take the skin part, and we'll make cracklings for cornbread and stuff like that. And we'll render up some lard so that we can use that for cooking and help with this double chin. Right there. So we'll ride the tractor over there to the salt box, which is about 200 yards away at our cap. So the last step for today in this process is we're going to put the hams and all this meat over in the salt box to cure, okay? How long will it take for this to cure? Six weeks. Six weeks to cure. Then you pull it out of the salt box and what? Bang it on the side and knock all the salt off and leave it for one more week. Okay. And then we'll pull it out. Take hang it out. Wash it off. Gotcha. Wash all the salt off on a windy March day. Okay. And that's when we'll put our uh, brown sugar and we'll put some black pepper yep. and red pepper on the bones to keep out the bugs. Okay. We'll cool. drop it in a paper bag from one end, a paper bag from the other end, and then we'll drop it into a pillowcase and hang it in the smokehouse for a year and a half. You want those? Cool. You want those? All right. That's a big ham, Joe. Oh, buddy. You're looking good. Looking good. Okay. What's next? Next. Well, whatever piece of, give me a little piece of fat back there. Okay. Now, just lay it to the side for a minute till we're here. Put it right here, Joe. Put it, put it right up in there. There you go. So now you're filling in all the empty voids with meat. Is that right. right? But you don't want meat touching meat, right? And you don't want meat touching the side. Is that right? Right. 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 It's got to be totally encapsulated right. by salt. Good enough. Okay. You're rubbing down in here real good on all the exposed surfaces and the meat will only take so much salt so it won't be super duper salty but it'll cure. It'll draw it in and cure it out. We'll cut the oxygen supply off to the meat. Okay. Just rake some off the floor. Be fine. There you go. Now you're getting it. Now you're salting it down. I'll put the square in right up there where he's got the bag. Square in. Yeah. That's a square in there. Exactly backwards. Okay. <laughs> Could have done it no more backwards. Than you try. Learn something. Learn something. <laughs> now wiggle the ham like that. Wiggle it. Stand in there. Okay. Pack your hock, pack your other. Leave it on an angle so that we can get the other one down in there beside of it. Great, great, great. Looking good, looking good. Couldn't have done it better myself. The salt should be real cold. It is. Uh, Yep, Let's see if we can work that other one in right here where this jowl is. It won't hurt nothing to move it a little bit. And then we'll get the other. Okay. All right, drop it straight down in. So you do it now? Yeah, I don't like that. Just like it. All right, straight down in there. That's about a 50 pound hand there. Uh -huh. Push it a little bit. They can move it around, make it maneuver it a little bit. If it touches barely, it doesn't hurt a thing. Okay. Now we got another salt that hot hood. Salt that dude down. Now, the salt itself will be recycled. We'll use this salt for two years in a row, and then we'll take the salt out chunk by chunk, and we'll set it out for the game, the deers, and the animals to eat because they need salt just like we do. Okay, now we're gonna come out of there with some, we'll throw a few, chink a few uh, pigs' feet down in there. You know, around a little bit. Now. What do you think about this Mrs. Stony Ridge? It's interesting. It makes you appreciate the meat you eat. Why does it make you appreciate the meat you're about to eat? Because all the hard work that's going into it. 
it is some hard work. All right, folks, this is the time where I tell you to click that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, leave some comments down there if you have any comments. Let me know, did you learn something today? I hope you learned a little something about the old style, the old way of doing things, the old way of curing hams, we never know. You might have to get back to this, pass on a little bit of knowledge to you today. Be sure you click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, click the little bell down there, and we'll take you along on our farm journey. All right, thanks a lot. Come on back and see me. Woo! Yes, Yes, I will.